Thanks, Chris. I'm here at Beef O'Brady's gearing up for the big game tomorrow, and I'm here with both head coaches now. Coach Martin, I'm going to start with you. You guys have dominated this series, winning 14 of the last 15. How confident are you guys going into the game tomorrow? The game is tomorrow night at 7 at Pineville, so fans come on out. And if you can't make it, you can catch the highlights on News Channel 5's fifth quarter with Chris Bailey and myself at 10. Now, Chris, I'm going to have these cheerleaders and football players help me send it back to you at the desk. <laughs> Wow, Coach, what a game, what an environment. Talk to me about how it feels to win that regular game title. Ladies. It's going to be coming down to Anthony Jennings and Brandon Harris, and you know, we're probably not even going to know who's going to be taking that first snap against Wisconsin and Houston until that game day. And a big game over in Baton Rouge this morning as the Tigers were looking to go a perfect 10 0 in home game so far this season. LSU's Jordan Mickey and Jarrell Martin certainly played plenty today, but with mixed results. Now, Mickey would swat a game high seven blocks. This one in the first half finished off by Mickey himself, plus the foul. He would complete the three-point play for the six-point lead. Now we'll take you to the end of the game. Texas A&M hadn't led since 9-7 to early in the game, but with 23 seconds left, it's Daniel House putting the Aggies up 65-64. to Now on the Tigers' next possession, Josh Gray drives. He's going to lose the rock for his fourth turnover of the night. LSU had 16 as a team. Now A&M would go on to make both free throws, and LSU with the chance to tie it at the gun, but Keith Hornsby's three-point pointer just rims out right in and out of there. Hornsby was just two for eight shooting for five points today. Texas A&M would win in Baton Rouge for the first time since 1941. The final score was 67 to 64 and there were definitely some boos after this one from the LSU fans. For Southern, I think the big key for today's game is going to be minimizing those defensive errors. Yesterday in the second game, they allowed Prairie View to score 13 runs, and only three of those were earned. And now Kramer's hoping that some of that national championship heritage will rub off on his new family here at LSU. And in this new young offense for LSU, Tiger fans seem to be asking who's going to step up and be the next playmaker. Peabody shooting guard Cedric Russell has received his first college offer from LSU. Right now, he's preparing for a state championship game. But just 10 months ago, Richard Cumbie's world was turned upside down. I noticed I had a, a lump on my neck, so my mom took me to the doctor, and they uh, checked me out that day. He said, come back a couple of weeks and see if it went down, and it didn't go down. And they gave me a needle biopsy, and then they told me it's, it was cancer. Cumbie's mindset for battling this disease? Go! Not what you'd expect. The doctor told Richard, well, Richard, you have uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Richard said, no, I don't. And he was like, yes, you do. And Richard was like, no, I don't. My God said that I don't have Hodgkin's lymphoma. I'm not speaking that on myself, so I would like for you not to speak that on me. But he never, never claimed that disease. But before they knew it, his journey with his mom to St. Jude in Memphis began, and his health continued to decline. We didn't want to lose him. We wanted to save him. Wrestling with you one day, and then next month, he in a wheelchair. Ballard could move. And while away from home, Cumbie was not forgotten. Coaches and teammates stayed in constant contact and never stopped praying. He's just a special kid. You can't put into words what, what Richard is. Richard's Richard, um, and there'll never be another one. He, he's really, like, crazy, like, funny. He, he always make people day better, and he was shy. In between treatments, he was able to return to Sen Line. Let's just say it was some powerful medicine. The truancy officer say, hold up right here. He got on a loudspeaker and announced to the whole school that he got a special guest and he said, no other than Richard coming did all the classroom doors bust open and all like the kids, party, like a, all the kids they ran, ran that surround them up in the middle of the gym. And right then is when you, you saw how much he meant to the other kids in the school. Now, Richard also plays baseball for UAC. The final game of the season just happened to fall right in the middle of his treatments, and he somehow convinced the doctors to let him come back home to play. And he did, with pick lines in his arm, receiving chemotherapy during the game. And he hits a, a shot into the outfield, and uh, it's probably the longest single I've ever seen. It took him about 10 seconds to get to first base to the point to where the umpire felt so sorry for him. He said, Coach, I won't even charge you a pinch runner. Get somebody in to run for this kid. Richard is healthy now. He started all season at defensive end for the Lions, and he's been a leader for a 12-1 and team in its first state championship game in school history. <sighs> Anything can happen. Don't take life for granted. Don't give up. God's not through with you yet. <laughs> Kelsey Winger, News Channel 5, your local station for sports.
As football season begins to come to an end and off season starts, for some guys it's a chance to relax, and for others it's just a chance to work harder. You either get better or you get worse, and every time I leave the gym I want to say, hey, I got better. Emmanuel Arsenault, Des Beverly, and Daryl Sturgeon are all Sinlaw natives trying to put Alexandria on the map. Being in Alexandria, central Louisiana, it's not the biggest city, so not too many people come out of Alexandria. We have a lot of athletes here, a lot of times overlooked, but it's a lot of talent in Alexandria. And hopefully, you know, they'll bring scouts to the see that we have talent in central Louisiana. After a quick stint in the NFL, Arsenault is now entering his fourth season with the BC Lions in the CFL, whereas Sergeant and Beverly are recent college grads trying to follow in his footsteps, as well as helping the next generation of Senla stars on the gridiron. I would tell them, don't get discouraged. If you're able to play the game at a high level, you're going to get the opportunity. So I would just tell those guys just to continue to push themselves, apply themselves in school as well, and just to work hard. We got to get to the top, bro. And that's just something I would like to just breed or just have rub off on people is the work ethic that I had, because that's pretty much all I had. Saying, you know what, I'm going to be successful regardless of the ins and outs and ups and downs. And with these guys' successes, hopefully the gates will open for others to follow. There's a lot of guys that's from the Alexandria area really haven't had the opportunities just to branch out or just make it to the next level. A couple years ago, breaking that barrier, showing that, hey, you know what, some guy from Alexandria can make it to the NFL or you can make it to the CFL. You know, the sky's the limit. That's pretty much to any kid that's in sin law, whether they're doing the professional sports, whether it's wanting to be a lawyer, doctor, dentist, um, it's nothing stopping them. And I just encourage every youth just to pursue their dreams because it's possible. Baby. In Alexandria, I'm Kelsey Wingert for News Channel 5, your local station for sports. From KALB, you're watching Sports Extra. The LC Wildcats still haven't played one home game at their home court because the floor still isn't ready. Today they played over at their neighbor's place again, LSUA. The Wildcats taking on the University of the Ozarks at the fort. 11 minutes left. The ball gets loose. Dylan Gray passes it over his head to Kelby Robinson, who gets two, but the Wildcats still lead by 14. Now a minute later, Anthony Gaines finds Kevin Lewis, who hits the layup and extends LC's lead 73-57. to And here's Lewis again. He was on fire today. He gets two more, and the Wildcats are owning this game, 75-57 to with 10 minutes left. But the Eagles are still finding ways to put up points. Ted Beard misses that basket, but Josh Broad gets it right back. And here comes Steve Evans, who is just adding on to the lead. Wildcats are winning 90 to 65. Now he goes for two more, but misses. And Raheem Regis is right there for the putback. LC wins big, 94 to 73. And the road doesn't get any easier for the Tigers. Not much time to dwell on this loss because they traveled to Florida this Tuesday. Now the Gators not having their usual year. They're sitting at 10 and 6. Tip off for that game is set for 6 p.m. And you can watch it over on ESPN. And the NFL playoffs continue this weekend, and we're getting closer and closer to the Super Bowl. This weekend is the conference championship games, a pair of quarterback duels on hand. Now, both games are tomorrow. The first game on top is Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers against Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. That game is in Seattle. Kickoff is set for 205 over on Fox. The winner of this game will advance to the Super Bowl. And right after that, the game is on CBS. You can switch to catch the second game of the day. The Colts will take on the Patriots in Foxborough. Kickoff for that game is set for 540. And the winner of that game will advance to the Super Bowl as well to take on the winner of the NFC Championship game. And the Pels have one day between one of their worst losses of the season to the 8-31 and 76ers to taking on the Raptors in Ontario. New Orleans was without AD and Drew Holiday, but Coach Williams says that's no excuse. Thanks, Chris. Now, we've had a great day here in Hoover so far, and LSU doesn't come until tomorrow, but they found a way to make it into a lot of the press conferences today. Hey, guys. Yeah, I was able to catch up with Coach Banks right before the game. He told me one of his biggest concerns was that the guys were going to be relaxed because they already know that they clinched first place. They're off to a slow start, but we'll see if they can pick up the momentum as they keep going. All right, so I was able to catch up with coaches from both teams before the game today. Now, the assistant coach from Southern told me that this was their main goal coming into the season to make it to this conference title game and he said that he thinks the keys to winning this game is going to be winning the rebound battle and making those jump shots now the TSU head coach told me that her team needed no motivation coming into this game that they're pumped and they're ready to go she said whichever team's defense shows up is going to be able to hang the banner back to you guys 
Hey guys, I'm joined here with assistant coach Arrow. Now you had a pretty good first half there. Talk to me a little bit about it. Especially holding Southern to 27 points. That's pretty good. How are you going to continue to keep them quiet offensively? I was able to catch up with Coach Cater before the game, and he was telling me about this new facility. It's going to have a training facility, locker rooms. It's going to have coach's office, just a place for Southern to be able to go and do all that stuff that they haven't been able to do here. He said it's a $1.2 million project that they're really looking forward to getting, and it's set to open in June. We're here with Coach Kador, and I just have a couple of questions for you about the game so far. Now, yesterday I know you guys had eight errors. Today you don't have any, and your pitcher's having a really good outing. So how much pressure is that taking off of him?